Anne Widdicombe, <laughs> George Clooney, if you had to. <coughs> You'd go for Anne Widdicombe? Are you <laughs> mental? <laughs> she's got a face like a bulldog licking the piss off a nettle. <laughs> and she's a hell of a size, you're a slip of a lad, she'd fuck you in half. <laughs> That is only where your problems begin, because I imagine her peachy pouch, her Lala, her Fufu, her Wendy, <laughs> her special lady garden, call it what you will, I bet it looks like a badger that's been hit with a shotgun. <laughs> I bet there are police divers that would be squeamish about going down on that. <laughs> I bet it looks like a bulldog eating mayonnaise. <laughs> I bet George Clooney's got the prettiest cock you've ever seen. <laughs> Why don't you just spit roast her? You're suggesting I double team <laughs> Anne Widdicombe with George Clooney. <laughs> now that is a celebrity sex tape that would sell. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a pub quiz the other night in aid of cancer research. I found myself halfway through thinking. Well, how much closer to a cure for cancer are we getting <laughs> by doing a pub quiz? And then I thought, well, don't be cynical. Look at the best-case scenario. What if they throw in the question, what's the cure for cancer? And someone flukes it. <laughs> I've got a question for you. Child cruelty, what do you think? Good thing, bad thing? <laughs> it's a bad thing, yeah. Well done, sir. <laughs> I think it's universally acknowledged that child cruelty is a very bad thing, and yet there are adverts on our TVs every day saying don't smack children. Never an excuse to smack a child. That's just telling us the blatantly obvious, isn't it? I think they should have to take a little bit of the money they spend on those adverts telling us not to smack our children and spend a bit on an advert aimed specifically at children. Simply saying, behave. <laughs> Let's face it, there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> no one's putting out cigarettes on children that are just quietly colouring in in the corner, are they? <laughs> Where are the teachers? Give us a shout, the teachers. And what was it that first attracted you to, um, children? <laughs> Not all teachers, obviously, that would be mental, but PE teachers, they're wrong uns. <laughs> you know what PE is short for? Pedo. <laughs> it's a fact. You can look that up. You know why so many American kids die in high school massacres? It's because they're not allowed to run in the corridors. <laughs> Take your time with that, that's wrong on a number of levels. <laughs> <laughs> it's very I don't know if you've noticed this, Birmingham. It's very difficult to get the first kiss right. You want to be firm, but gentle. You want to be manly, but you don't want to wake her up. <laughs> this is the harshest heckle I've ever had to deal with. I was doing a gig in uh, Edinburgh at Leighton Live. It doesn't start till one o'clock in the morning, so they're all out of their minds on heroin and shortbread. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's a late night gig, everyone's drunk and high and out of their minds, and, and it's all going quite well. I'm about ten minutes into the gig, and you know, doing my usual thing. It's about eight years ago, I was pretty new to this game. And this guy from the side shouts very clearly, loudly, confidently, just as I'm halfway through a joke, My mum died of cancer. <laughs> I thought, shit, the bed, what the fuck? <laughs> I thought, well, I'll deal with this logically and in order. I, I, I said, well, firstly, I wasn't talking about mums, and secondly, I wasn't talking about cancer. <laughs> and he came back with the epically harsh, no, but it was funnier than this. <laughs> you know what, sorry? A ward sister. Well done. That's a great job. I always wanted to work in the medical profession. I wanted to be a doctor. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe if you'd worked harder. <laughs> No, ward sisters are perfect. Yeah, it's a great job. It's a brilliant thing. But I always wanted to work in the medical profession because, you know, I liked the lab coat and I thought the stethoscope was cool and I thought chicks would like me. <laughs> chicks would like me. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what I was thinking. <laughs> but I, I could never become a doctor because I didn't have the chemistry or the maths or the physics you needed to get in. And also, I'm quite an uncaring person. <laughs> if someone's sick, I sort of think, fuck them. <laughs> but I think I found a hospital in South London where I'd be able to get a job. It's the Wandsworth Hospice for Incurable Diseases. <laughs> How tough could that be? <laughs> You'd stroll in about 11.30, chat up with a couple of nurses, you know, check what's for lunch. A patient would come up. 
Can you do anything, Doctor? Did you not read the sign? <laughs> it would be remiss of me, ladies and gentlemen, not to talk to you all about the environment, because that is the big issue, which has upset the homeless no end. <laughs> A carbon footprint is a metaphor for the mark you leave on the earth as you walk through your lives. Of course, I don't have one, because I drive everywhere. <laughs> and it is twice as bad if you're Christian, because you've got Jesus traipsing alongside you. <laughs> Gentlemen, if you have never tried to fillet yourself... <laughs> ..suck yourself off... <laughs> so I, I was saying what it meant, I wasn't saying suck yourself off. I was, <laughs> that wasn't an order. Gentlemen, if you've never tried to fillet yourself, raise your hand now. <laughs> That's my favourite bit of the show. <laughs> it's the couples that have clearly been together for a while, I like best. It's, it's the woman initially going... <laughs> no, he, he said, put your hand up, he never listens. <laughs> and then the slow look of realisation. <laughs> You're optimistic, you can't even touch your fucking toes. <laughs> Quite a few of you down there have got your hands up, you guys. Did you all have a go on each other's, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I like the way... Sorry, you guys, the, the, I presume you're someone's dad and then all the kids there. Is that the... Yeah, OK, so you've got dad and then kid, 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 <laughs> kid, kid. And it went basically, dad put his hand up and then son went, yeah, and then the next one went, yeah. <laughs> and then the next one went, yeah, I've definitely never done that. <laughs> down the line. It was like a domino effect, <laughs> but with horrible lies that make the baby Jesus cry. <laughs> Even the little baby Jesus tried to suck his own cock. Come on, let's... <laughs> Can you say that? Yeah, sure you can, why not? <laughs> the only thing better than being a doctor, I think, would be to be a vet. I'd love to be a vet. Because vets are like doctors, they're admired in the community. Is there any, any vets in, by any chance? Are you, you're a vet. You're a student vet. You have picked a winner. <laughs> the great thing about being a vet and you're just a student, but the great thing about being a vet is you've got the Joker card you can play. If you absolutely have to be somewhere at 6.30, you can play the Joker card. The big injection. If you can't work out what the problem is, or it's too much bother, whoop, gone. <laughs> that problem has gone away. <laughs> the veterinary surgery, the local vets, has got an incinerator out the back for a reason. Because <laughs> they're busy people. I've never once heard a doctor say, yeah, your ten-year-old boy, he's had a good innings. <laughs> he's quite severely asthmatic. <laughs> you know, we could keep him alive with pills and injections and whatnot, but it's quite expensive and a little bit messy. <laughs> It'd be much easier if I just put him off to sleep with this. <laughs> if you're Scottish and you don't want to know how you're going to die, look away now. Heart disease. <laughs> When my doctor told me I had heart problems, I took it with a pinch of salt. <laughs> to cut a long story short, Frodo does it. <laughs> Let's talk about faith and spirituality, an important part of our psyches, I'm sure you will agree. Christians say, and there may be Christians in this evening, Christians say, Jesus died for your sins. Be good. I say, he's already dead. Fuck it. <laughs> What's he going to do? Get dead and fill your fucking boots, mate. <laughs> also, if he died for your sins and you don't do any sins, you've made him look a right cunt. <laughs> if you get arrested for making obscene phone calls and you get taken down to the station and you've got one phone call... <laughs> it's got to be a temptation, isn't it? <laughs> Excuse me, officer, I'm just going to finish myself off. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you why I've asked you all to come this evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to talk to you about men that like obese women. <laughs> I'm not talking about men that like women with a fuller figure. That seems entirely normal, natural and right. More cushion for the pushing, as I believe people say. <laughs> I think that's the expression. No, I'm talking about men that like women who are... can't leave the house fat. <laughs> so, I'm not talking about anyone in here this evening. Unless, in order to get out, someone had to cut the side of the house off. <laughs> and there was some sort of winch involved. I'm not talking about people with water retention. I'm talking about people with cake retention. <laughs> people that tell you they've got a thyroid problem. You say, oh, really, a thyroid problem? What are you taking for that? Pies? <laughs> you know, the kind of girl that looks as if she makes a cracking breakfast. But wouldn't want to share it with you. 
I saw a thing on TV the other day, actually. It was on one of these kind of makeover shows that were on during the day. They did a makeover on a girl. She was 34 stone. It's like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. <laughs> I say a makeover, they gave her a fringe. <laughs> Is that really going to turn the corner for a girl like that? That's what I'm asking. I don't think it will. I can't imagine the scenario where a guy, you know, he's drinking in a bar, he looks across, he sees a girl, she's 34 stone, be tough to miss her, let's face it. <laughs> he thinks to himself, she's a little bit big for me. Goes back to his drink. Meanwhile, the makeover team are in. Snip, snip, snip. <laughs> he looks back, he thinks, actually, I would. <laughs> it's the excuses that get me. The excuses are amazing. The camera adds 10 pounds. Stop eating fucking cameras. <laughs> There used to be a problem with racism in this country. When my family moved here from, from Limerick, when my family moved here from Limerick in the 1970s, it was still commonplace, yeah, to have signs in hotels and B&Bs in the window saying, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. I thought this country had changed and changed for the better. I'm not so sure. I was in a shop the other day. They had a sign up saying, checks not accepted. <laughs> it's a disgrace. I saw a thing on Sky News. The bloke went, should Eastern European immigration be stopped? Let's see what the polls have to say. <laughs> a very poor choice of words. As everyone's dressed up, it's a Saturday night. Let's start things properly. Let's have a round of applause for the ladies. Let's have a round of applause. Yeah, let's have a round of applause for the ladies. Yeah, yeah, quite right, yeah. That's, actually, that's, that's probably enough. Looking around, some of them have made no effort. <laughs> You've not made an effort, have you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bless him. Mongo, no lie. <laughs> Look at you! <laughs> and so your comment there is that I haven't made much of an effort. Well, there's some cameras and some fucking lights. I don't know what you had in mind. <laughs> it's not like I come to your work and knock the sailor's cocks out your mouth, is it? Very weird thing from a quite a tough looking man from Glasgow to say, Oh, you've not made much of an effort. I thought you'd be dressed up prettier. <laughs> it's a little bit prison rape coming from you, sir. <laughs> That's what it feels like. My point there's an incredible amount of pressure on women these days to be beautiful and thin, and all I can say is, we've got some very brave girls in here this evening, really. <laughs> Terrific stuff. No, there are some stunning-looking women in here this evening, and some right dogs. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> I'm joking. No one in here is stunning. <laughs> I fucked a girl with one leg. <laughs> Should have used my cock. <laughs> no, I realise this joke does not require a mime. Saturday night in Birmingham, come on. <laughs> I said to my girlfriend, I said, um, I said, you want to experiment with a role-play rape fantasy? She said, no! I said, that's the spirit. <laughs> rape is such a horrible word, though. It's such a harsh, brutal, awful word. Rape. That's why I prefer to call it a struggle snuggle. <laughs> you couldn't stay mad at a struggle snuggleist, could you? <laughs> now, for better or for worse, this is a question I use to judge an audience, to judge individuals. If you could all answer, that would be great. Would you fuck your dad to save your mum? <laughs> I don't know why you're looking so upset. It's easier for girls. <laughs> He's ugly. He's ugly. <laughs> Imagine that being a factor. <laughs> Imagine thinking, yeah, I would fuck my dad, but he's not a looker. <laughs> he's let himself go maybe five years ago. <laughs> what would you, sir? <laughs> he's there. Oh, hi. <laughs> So, do you mind me asking, is your mum here as well? Yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well, we can actually do a proper test. 
Now, I've got snipers all the way around this building. <laughs> and they're pointing a gun at your mother, yeah? We're gonna kill her. Your mum's been taken hostage. She's gonna be killed. We would like you to bum your dad. Um, well... It's difficult. Yeah, of course it's difficult. I'm not saying you wouldn't be thumbing in a softy. That's fine. I say let her die. You say let her die. Sorry, hang on, you're, you're, we're not in Norfolk, what are you booing? <laughs> you're booing a man saying, I wouldn't bum my dad. <laughs> Just take a moment to think about that. <laughs> All right, so you've made your decision. <laughs> listen to Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right, Mum. <laughs> it's all right, Mum. Is that, is that your daughter there? Yeah. <laughs> Same question to you. <laughs> I love my job. <laughs> At what point did you think as a family this would be a good show to go and see? <laughs> Never mind that Lion King bullshit. <laughs> Let's bring the kids out to see a proper show <laughs> where we openly discuss incest. <laughs> Our friend of mine, quite recently, a couple of months ago, got proper old school flashed. Guy in a Mac at dusk in a park, one of those. <laughs> Sorry, I've added that. I don't. I don't know if he did that. <laughs> you would, though, wouldn't you? You'd give it a better cock slap. <laughs> You'd probably treat it to the windmill, wouldn't you? Who are you hurting? <laughs> anyway, she got proper old school flashed and she shouted, Rape! I thought, don't give him ideas. <laughs> don't workshop, are you fucking lunatic? <laughs> I saw a story in the local paper. It said an 83 year old woman was marrying an 87 year old man. I thought, oh, that's not going to last. <laughs> I used to be quite religious, and I'm fascinated by lots of religious groups. There's, um, there's some brilliant ones. There's the, um, the people that wear the armbands, WWJD. Stands for What Would Jesus Do? And Christians wear them to remind them to be more like Christ in everyday life. They sort of see that and they're, oh, what would Jesus do in this situation? Yeah. For the most part, they're very effective. They make people so annoying, you want to nail them to a cross. <laughs> <laughs> my, my absolute favourite Christian organisation of all time, it's called Christians Against Teenage Pregnancies. That's the Everest of hypocrisy, isn't it? If Jesus taught us nothing else, he taught us that the unwanted babies of teenage mums can turn out all right. <laughs> <laughs> you look as if you didn't quite understand that. <laughs> Do you know who the protagonist is? It's Jesus, born at Christmas or Easter. You must have heard of him. <laughs> King of the Jews, best Jew ever. <laughs> he could walk on water. Well, he probably couldn't walk on water. His mum probably just exaggerated. He was probably very good on ice skates. <laughs> he died for your sins. Come. <laughs> you got arrested for flashing. <laughs> well, don't take it out on me. <laughs> what do you mean you got arrested for flashing? Well, I was, I was going for a piss. You were going for a piss? <laughs> this sounds like bullshit to me. You were going for a piss. Where were you going for a piss? Get, set the scene for us. I've never met anyone that's flashed. Go on. It's going for a piss in a primary school. In a car park. <laughs> in a car park, OK. In a car park outside, you're going for a piss. Caught short. Late at night, fine, OK. And I needed a piss, so I went up against a tree. You went up against a tree? Yeah. Turned out it wasn't a tree, it was a fat girl? <laughs> Go on, so you walked up to a tree to take a pee in a car park. This doesn't sound terrible. So far, I'm on this guy's side. Go on. So there was a woman in the trees. Um... There was a woman in the trees. <laughs> Sounds like you've broken dogging etiquette by pissing on someone. <laughs> so you went up to take a piss on a tree, and there was a woman in the tree. She was walking. There's a pathway. She was walking, OK. And it was outside a police station. And it was outside a police station. <laughs> What kind of a fucking idiot are you? <laughs> you? You went for a piss in the police station car park. <laughs> Why don't you just turn yourself in? <laughs> That's a cry for help if ever I heard one. Lock me up before I hurt someone. <laughs> and what, did she scream? Did she complain? What happened? No, she went into the police station and uh, they came out and arrested me for indecent exposure. They came out and arrested you for indecent... Is it because you're a bit ginger? <laughs> Do you think they would have let you off if you hadn't been quite as 
I'm sorry about these lights as well. We could well be giving you skin cancer. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr and uh, I'm announcing a new tour. It's called Jimmy Carr Laughs Funny because, you know, I do. I go to jimmycarr.com for dates and tickets and then, uh, you know, I guess buy a ticket and come and see the tour. I laugh funny, so can you. Come and see me.